I'm currently traveling in Paraguay, South America. And right now I'm asking questions related to the status of indigenous groups, deforestation, and Paraguay's unregulated marijuana industries. So I'll be producing multiple parts that include these adventures, so join me on this journey of exploring a country that rarely seems to land on the international news, but is definitely a significant part of South America. Hey guys, welcome to Paraguay. We are headed to the Mbaracaju Forest Reserve. This is one of the largest contiguous sections of Atlantic Forest left remaining in Paraguay. The Atlantic Forest is called the Atlantic Forest because this type of forest used to go all the way to the southeastern coastline of Brazil. Most of that forest isn't intact anymore. It's estimated that only about 7% of it remains. They've been dealing with fires at the reserve, um, so they're still on red alert. One of the big questions related to the fires is how much is natural and how much results from human influence. So that's what we're up to today, and I'm excited to take you with us to see this amazing place. to the Mbaracaju right now. I just wanted to show you some of these fires that we're seeing. So this just gives you an example of the, the type of slash and burn tactics that some of the farmers in this area have. This is probably what causes some of the fires that, that end up reaching the Mbaracaju Reserve. Mateo, or Matthew, in English. The Embarcaju Forest Nature Reserve was established by an agreement between the government of Paraguay, the Moises Bertoni Foundation, the United Nations, and the Nature Conservancy. The reserve was declared a Paraguay heritage area dedicated to protect the forest, biological diversity, and cultural resources here. Different forest types cover almost 88% of the reserve, and the remainder consists of wetlands, pasture lands, lagoons, rivers, and cerrado vegetation. 
Outside of the reserve are farms and cattle ranches of various sizes and indigenous communities as well, the main ethnic group being the Aceh. So we are going on some of the walking trails mm -hmm. with Arnando, one of the forest guards as well. They have some walking trails that extend about uh, one to two kilometers um, away from the administrative building and anybody can go walk and hike there so it's really fun for tourists as well. This is a 200 year old Ubera Puta and look at the size of this thing. That tree is almost as old as the United States of America. That's amazing. So we walked through this, down this bridge, and there were just like swarms of butterflies all around us. Look at this! Look at this! Look at this giant toad! It's <laughs> amazing! Guarani se le dice kururu. In Guarani, this is uh, called kururu. Kururu. That's hard to say. Kururu. <laughs> Look at its eyes! This line right through the middle here, this is where the tractor came through to clear some of the forest so that the fire wouldn't jump from this side across to this side. What are the reasons that some of these fires started? How did they how did they get to this this area which is close to the entrance? How did they get to this area to begin with? La causa de este fuego sería empezó acá la propiedad de indígena H. Ellos estaban preparando para su chakra. Empezaron la limpieza, acumularon malezas, entonces quemaron ellos para limpiar. Como no hicieron la, el sería el cortafuego para prever que no pase, que no se queme el monte, eh, vino un vino un viento fuerte, ellos no pudieron controlar y pasó, pasó y ya estaba muy seco esto, entonces por eso fue que avanzó. So this is from Arroyo Bandera. Es Arroyo Bandera. So the community close by. Yo creo que esto pasa porque ellos no, no, no tienen ese conocimiento ni no, no está bien preparado como para que puede traer una consecuencia. O sea, están acostumbrados de, de quemar nomás y nunca pasó más que eso, nunca avanzó el fuego en el monte. Tenía ese concepto hasta ahora, pero ahora es el cambio es mucho más que antes, entonces cuando hay sequía, es mucho seco, muy seco, puede quemarse cualquier árbol verde entonces vamos a tratar de, de hablar con la gente la comunidad con los estancieras la comunidad de campesinas indígenas 
eh, como para tratar de mejorar esto porque esto va a seguir uh -huh. y creo que sería interesante que ellos sepan manejar las épocas principalmente cómo hacer y trataremos de hacer esto con ellos, con, con la uh -huh. gente de la comunidad. Al pisar ya se dan cuenta cómo está seco. So this fire was here 15 days ago and um, is still burning. So Freddy just walked, walked just uh, a few meter. steps this way yeah, like and picked up, picked up a log with embers and it's still in it. Es una sorpresa para mí porque nosotros ni entramos más acá a monitorear. Pensamos que ya se había apagado totalmente, pero no. Sigue el fuego. Este es peligroso. So basically in the Cerrado, uh, the grasslands, the fire moves much more quickly. So Fires that come through the Cerrado endanger the animals much more as far as animals that it can potentially kill. So that's one of the reasons why they actually do control burns in the Cerrado and is to prevent against worse fires that would potentially come through that area and kill some of the animals. In the forest, the fire tends to burn slower as it, as it moves through, through the Atlantic forest. And so that's why they haven't seen a lot of dead animals even as a result of of these forest fires here, so I think that's a really important detail to clarify in terms of analyzing the overall destruction that happens in the middle of the forest fires here. I travel to a community of the Aceh culture Popo. There's about a thousand people here. It's the largest uh, Aceh community. And while we were here, um, we were asking more about uh, the fires specifically that were happening in the Mbarakaju. And as it turns out, um, one additional thing that we learned is that many of the Aceh were also involved in helping to fight these fires. So this is Chachugi y Tikorangi. Um, they are at least, um, Titorangi is, is 62 years old. And both of them were, were part of helping actually put out the fires in the Mbarakaju. They were working along with the military with the Fundacion Moises Bertoni. So, and at this age, it's, <laughs> it's actually pretty incredible. Um, but they also used to live um, in the forest in this, in this uh, area when they were younger. So, um, what were your experiences in, with this? Contra Coming down harder. I am excited and grateful to see rain. So when morning strikes here, we'll be visiting some of the potential fires or where there were fires in the northern regions of the reserve. Um, 
So we're getting ready to head out this morning and it's raining today. So what do you think of what do you think about this? Okay. Sí. Do you know how much rain there's been at this point? Less than five millimeters. Less than five millimeters? Very little. How much how much rain do you think would be needed to sort of balance everything out again? So there are some ranchers that live on this side of the road here and the fire came across this road and then went into the reserve on this side. The, the fires that are deeper, or is it also caused by the same fire that started here? Es porque hay algunas parcelas eh, para plantación ilegal. Sí. So the one, so we're at the northwestern corner now, yes. but there are there are fires that are that are deeper inside the north section of the Maracaju, and those, as as was stated by Freddie, were started by some of the plantations yes. on the inside. Um, most likely marijuana plantations, right? Plantación de marihuana, sí. Some drone footage now showing some of the new clearings in the reserve from two to three days ago. Um, Freddie, how much how much are you actually able to go into these areas and down into this region? Is that something that you would do? Or is it or is it too dangerous to to go down actually near those parcels, parcels and plantations? Nosotros solos los guardaparques no entramos porque Ellos siempre están preparados y armados. Lo que hacemos es siempre presentar las denuncias en la fiscalía. Después pedimos apoyo. A veces sí nos hace caso, en general no. Ellos hacen la vista gorda, o sea, no, no pasa nada. A veces conseguimos eh, apoyo, vienen y podemos entrar. Pero esta parcela de acá queda 3 kilómetros y medio. Ese 3 kilómetros y medio te puede llevar caminar esa zona como 6 a 7 horas. For what reasons do you speculate that they don't respond? Yo creo que acá el tema es muy si vamos a explicar es muy complejo porque sabemos que cómo se 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 maneja en la casa el tema de corrupción. O sea, puede haber soborno eh, muchas veces, entonces no, no, no hacen caso. Eh, no te puedo decir que sí o sí, pero eso puede pasar. The growers or the narcos activity that's here, how is it possible for them to go that far into the reserve and then transport everything back out? How, could, how do they even accomplish that? Eh, no, no es fácil entrar ni para ellos ni para nosotros. Eh, siempre lleva tiempo porque por eso justamente ellos buscan lugares donde es difícil acceso. No importa el tiempo que le llevan, caminen. Lo, lo, lo importante yo creo que para ellos es esconderse. No importa cuánto tiempo le llevan. Contrata a 20, 30 personas y sacan. Nuestra preocupación es la reserva, que ellos siguen eh, echando monte, quemando. Entonces, eso es la, la preocupación más grande que tenemos nosotros. Hay muchas plantaciones seguramente también, eh, que sabemos que en todo el país es muy difícil de de que se termine esto. Tenemos que hacer sí o sí el monitoreo mensualmente para cumplir también con las leyes o si no, no, no nos vienen multas también a través del o por medio del Ministerio del Ambiente. 
También se habla de la legalización de la marihuana. ¿Crees que esto podría ser una ayuda? Yo creo que sí. Eh, personalmente diría yo que esto va a ayudar mucho. Porque la gente lo que hace es plantar a escondido. Porque tienen miedo. Entonces, si una vez que se legalice, se puede plantar en, en, en cualquier lado, en cualquier parte. Y también no va a tener eh, mucho ingreso. Porque va a bajar mucho la, el, el precio, porque todo el mundo puede plantar. Y va a haber más controles, entonces yo creo que eso es una de las alternativas mejores. Eh, los 7 millones de hectáreas de bosque atlántico que había, ahora queda nada más 7%. Y el único remanente de bosque más grande que hay en Paraguay, en el departamento, digo, en la región oriental, es la Reserva Maracayú. Realmente que, no, que el gobierno no... No se haya preocupado como para afrontar esto, porque si seguimos así en 10 años, no sé qué va a pasar. Eh, va, va a ir quedando como una isla si, si ahora no empezamos a, a hacer algo. I wish you the most, the best of strength, really, in continuing to persevere in, in this long journey you've had, including your entire family, who's been operating alongside the Fundación Moises Bertoni. It's amazing. Hacemos todo lo posible para que esto siempre eh, se mantenga. Yo soy de la zona, nací en el monte prácticamente. Toda mi familia, mi familia eh, siempre está a favor. Le gusta la de ser mi papá de guardabosque, siempre le apoyo. Mi familia también me, me apoya. En muchas situaciones es difícil. Pero hay que saber sobrellevar esto, porque esto es para todo. A mí me gusta lo que estoy haciendo, me encanta. Sé que estoy cuidando eh, una porción de bosque que es para todos. Y entonces me siento feliz con esto y voy a seguir haciendo todo lo posible para que esto siempre se, se quede acá a perpetuidad para, todo, para toda la gente o para todo el mundo. So Freddie also explained that on a really good year, the government only helps with 25% of reported cases of marijuana plantations in the reserve. Marijuana is a multi-billion dollar industry in Paraguay, but most of these profits aren't secured by the local growers, but mainly traffickers behind the scenes who hire campesinos, ranchers, and indigenous groups to grow and distribute the marijuana. This year, Paraguay legalized marijuana for a limited number of contractors for scientific and medical purposes. Oddly enough, environmental conservation and protection of Paraguayans with low incomes may be some of the strongest reasons in favor of Paraguay's steps towards further legalization of marijuana. Legalization and regulation could potentially lower the risk for growers, making it less necessary to grow marijuana deep within forest reserves. It could also make it safer for the guards from Fundacion Moises Bertoni, who have to deal with death threats and bribe offers every time they report the marijuana plantations. What is clear is that in many ways the government has been largely negligent in aiding the protection of the Mbaracaju. There's so much more about this reserve that I would have loved to go into depth on. Fundacion Moises Bertoni is self-sustainable through tourism at the reserve. Much of their profits from tourism supports a school that helps with young women to graduate with high school degrees, including curriculum focused on forest management and environmental conservation. I was also only able to scratch the surface concerning the relationships between the foundation and the Aceh indigenous group. When the boundaries of the Mbarakaju were created, many of the Aceh were still living in this area, and this was their historical homeland. While the Aceh still have permissions to hunt traditionally with their bow and arrow and gather food, there can be a wide cultural divide between academic forest management and the heritage of living within and using the forest for survival. The ongoing tasks of bridging cultural differences is definitely not easy, but it's essential for the Aceh in feeling connected to their homeland and cultural identity. But this was an incredible experience for me being here in the reserve. The generosity of the Aceh provided me with forest honey for needed energy, and without the support of the Fundacion Moises Bertoni, I may never have been able to step foot into such a beautiful oasis.
<laughs> I know it's dumb. I know it's dumb of me, guys. I know it's dumb. <laughs> but I have not gotten used to that feeling yet. Uh, I'm so, that was a real jump. <laughs> I'm so weak. I'm so weak when it comes to this animal. <laughs> this place, this reserve, would be really high on my recommend list for places to visit even as tourists. Despite the complications that I've shown in this episode, that's one of the things that will help keep this place here, is a strong support of ecotourism that will add value to these forests. And tell your friends about the Atlantic forest and the significance of it, and that will go a long way in the future to be able to preserve and protect these regions. So, muchas gracias.